What's up everybody? Welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's video. Thank you for joining me for this one, which I've been ridiculously excited to sit down and film since we came home from the Florida Keys yesterday. In today's video, I really wanted to sit down and just have a chat about some of the zero waste or eco-friendly efforts that I thought were really positive from our trip away. And just from, of course, a tourist perspective, what I thought definitely needs some improvement. Now, I do want to just say from the outset, yes, I am aware of the carbon footprint associated with traveling. Traveling is something that I have always loved to do. So although, of course, I am a zero waste advocate, I know that some people are going to say, well, that's a bit hip critical and I'm not even gonna lie that it is one of the things that I am trying to work on so there are other things that I do in my life to offset the once or twice a year that I do take plane travel and if you want me to talk about those in a separate video I absolutely can do that but I just wanted to get that out of the way at the start so arriving at the Keys, we stayed on site at the Marriott Bay Resort in Key Largo. I hadn't been to Key Largo before, my parents had visited and they had done things like a beach clean, so I kind of was expecting the beach to be a little bit littered with plastic, but because we stayed on a resort, I found this actually wasn't the case, which I was so, so happy about. The staff on site are absolutely amazing at keeping that area of beach clean. However, I was really, really shocked at this resort to actually find that all of the drinks from the bar are served in plastic cups. This honestly is kind of mind blowing to me because as a restaurant, as a food service kitchen, the likelihood is that there are dishwashers to clean cutlery and delf. So I was genuinely confused and baffled as to why there were no glasses on site. And yes, I understand from a health and safety perspective, it's probably not the best thing to have people walking around in bare feet on a beach resort, essentially, potentially stepping on glass. But I do think that there is an element of self-responsibility. If you knock a glass over, you're probably going to tell somebody and they're probably going to clean it up. And I don't think this happens a lot in reality because if you are spending $10 on a drink, you are gonna mine that drink with your life. That is one of the major negatives that we found, not just at the Marriott Resort, but actually throughout the entire Keys. Almost everywhere we went, we were served in plastic cups. A little bit mind blowing and something that I have written to Marriott about. And when they get back to me, of course, I will post on my Instagram stories what that response was. The second thing that I noticed that was particularly obvious was that every morning at the breakfast, all the apples were wrapped in plastic. This, again, I don't understand. A fruit has a natural skin. The purpose of the skin of an apple is to protect the apple. And standard goes that if you pick up an apple, you should wash that apple or any other piece of fruit before consumption. So we don't see why we have to be so overly concerned with health and safety to the extent that we have to wrap fruit that is already protected in an additional plastic wrapping. Honestly, it just made me really angry <laughs> every morning I was having my breakfast and it kind of took up a lot of my energy saying, why are they doing this? Why, 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 why? And again, it's especially surprising given that you're at a beach resort, yet we're wrapping in tiny little plastic bags that once in the water look to a sea turtle exactly like a jellyfish. The plastic bag looks like food. To me, it's a no brainer. And of course I do understand that the zero waste movement and that environmentalism is slowly making its way across the world. And it's obviously taking impact at different levels, at different points in the process. But I do think that these are some of the most blatantly obvious changes that could be made. And it was very disappointing to see that they aren't being made. On our last night before we flew home, we actually stayed at a Marriott just beside the airport and really nice hotel. We really enjoyed the stay until it came down to the breakfast the following morning. Oh, you won't even believe these photos. This is what we walked down to, okay? Paper plates, plastic cutlery, plastic cups, and it was even more heart-wrenching, gut-wrenching for somebody who really cares about reducing their plastic waste to see everybody throwing all that plastic into the same bins. These bins were not even being separated into compostable paper plates, if they were even compostable, and cutlery. I can only hope that there is some waste separating facility when it eventually reaches the waste sorting plant, but I'm gonna be honest, I highly doubt it. The likelihood is they are just going to continue to sit in landfill for thousands upon thousands upon thousands of years. 
While we were on the Keys for the week, we did take a couple of trips to the local Winn-Dixie's, which is an absolutely amazing shop. Everybody knows that I love to go grocery shopping and their range of loose fruit and veg was really encouraging. So I thought that was a really positive thing until we got to the checkout and the lady wanted to put our produce into a plastic bag. Now in Ireland, I think most people will know that we do have a charge for single use plastic bags. And in reality, we don't see them that much. We have our bags for life and we even have these much more heavy duty bags. This one I think is from Aldi. Yeah, this is from Aldi and they last an incredibly long time. And this is just the norm for us in this country now. It's very, very rare to see anybody walking down the street with a bag that either isn't paper or isn't a reusable type of bag for life. So again, being offered these single use plastic bags was a bit of a shock to the system. And even though I had no bags with me, I was like, no folks, gather your arms because we are not taking single use plastic bags home with us. And that was just the reality. We literally stocked ourselves up as much as we possibly could, ran to the car and threw the stuff in the boot. It would have been just gut wrenching to put three or four things in a bag and know that it was never going to be used again and had no capacity to ever be used again. So I don't want to come across like I'm bashing the keys because again, as I said, the movement reaches different places in different stages, but it does need to be highlighted. We can't avoid these issues anymore. However, to talk about some of the positive aspects of our trip, there were a couple, thankfully. So firstly, I should actually say props and hats off to Lufthansa, who are our carrier on our flight to the Keys for their use of reusable cutlery on a plane. I have never seen this in any of my plane travel over the year. And frankly, it was very exciting to receive a set of actual reusable stainless steel cutlery to have my dinner with. As you can imagine, if there is 350 people on a plane that are not using a plastic knife and fork and spoon, that is going a long way towards a reduction in consumption of plastic. So hats off Lufthansa, I was very impressed and credit where credit is due. One more thing that I thought was incredibly positive about the Keys in general was the absolute abundance of water refill stations. Almost everywhere you go has somewhere to fill up your bottle. I always travel with a reusable bottle. If you didn't know this, you can actually empty it out and you can take an empty reusable water bottle with you through security. And you can have that then for the rest of your trip. Yes, I do get excited about stuff like that and I'm not ashamed. <laughs> The next thing I thought was particularly good was although we were receiving our drinks in plastic cups, we actually received paper straws with those drinks. Now, I know that there is a ban on plastic straws, particularly in Key West. I don't believe as of right now that this ban has extended to Key Largo and other areas of the Keys. I am incredibly hopeful for the future that that will be the case, especially because obviously you're at the Keys, you're right beside the sea with an abundance of sea life. There were a couple of restaurants in Key Largo that we visited, which unfortunately did have plastic straws. Again, because that ban hasn't extended the whole way along the Keys, but for the most part, we were given paper straws. So while we were there, we had the opportunity to go snorkeling and we had never been open water snorkeling before. So this was an absolutely incredible opportunity and we were grabbing it by the cojones and we were going for it, even though I was absolutely petrified I was gonna be eaten by a shark. But anyhow, we did it and honestly, it was amazing. And we went snorkeling at the John Pennycamp State Park. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Locals, again, you could correct me if I'm wrong, but it was absolutely, an incredibly inspiring and eye-opening experience because we got to see firsthand the reef, the coral reef alive and thankfully thriving, even though it was recovering almost two years after the aftermath of Hurricane Irma, the reef was still recovering from that natural disaster. And it really just hammered home how important it is that we are not contributing to the reef's need to recover. Because the tours are so conscious about making sure that the reef is protected, they even take any plastic that you may have off your snorkels and encourage you to make sure that everything is locked down so that no plastic ends up in the ocean. And I think they're doing an absolutely fantastic job at doing that. But of course, the problem with microplastic is so prevalent that us with the naked eye there, we would never have any idea that microplastic was affecting the biodiversity and the biome of the reef. I really do want to hammer home and get across how important our efforts in our local communities are to this grander scheme of the protection and life and health of our oceans. It's all connected, we are all connected. And I think the sooner that people realize that, 
the sooner that we can all make some really positive changes. So I think that snorkeling experience has had a really profound impact on me and in how I intend to make even further changes on my zero waste journey and in trying to bring some awareness and some education to these issues. And if you do get the chance, to go out and snorkel i would urge you to do it even if you were absolutely petrified like i was if i'm able to do it then anybody can do it <laughs> so that brings me to the end of my positive and negative zero waste experience during our family holiday to the florida keys i really hope you enjoyed the video and that you learned a little bit of something to be on the lookout for when you're on your own vacations or just things that you could change yourself in your own home in future again if there's any locals that have seen this video please do leave those local initiatives in the comment section below if there's anything that i just literally didn't see while i was there i'd be really curious to know what local communities are doing to reduce waste on the keys and with that said if you did like this video please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up also please don't forget to hit subscribe and turn on your notification bell so that you don't miss any more of my videos and i look forward to seeing you in my next one bye